Okay, we're back taking notes in our Bible, and this is going to be the outline for the epistle of Paul to the Philippians. The author, the Apostle Paul, around 62 to 64 AD, you got 104 verses, around 2,183 words, and four chapters. Now, the three applications, historically, Paul writes to this church to thank them, inform them, and to encourage them. Doctrinally, it focuses on Jesus Christ and how you can have joy in difficulty. If you focus on Jesus Christ, you can have joy in any difficulty. Inspirationally, keep your mind on Jesus Christ to have joy, confidence, and strength. Now, ten principles... To make a strong Christian, you'll find in the book of Philippians. Ten principles to make a strong Christian that you find in the book of Philippians. The first one is God saved you for a purpose. That's chapter 1 and verse 6. Number two, we live for him and to die would be a good thing. That's chapter 1 and verse 21. Number three, you get God's mind out of his book. That's chapter two and verse five. Number four, everyone will bow to Jesus Christ eventually. That's chapter two and verse 10. Number five is that you may know him. Salvation, that's salvation, that you may know him. Have power, suffer his reproach, and be more like Christ. That's chapter three and verse 10. The sixth thing, get past the past. That's chapter 3, 13 through 14. Number seven, you will have perfect peace. It's only through the Lord. Through the Lord, you can have perfect peace. That's chapter 4 and verse 7. Number eight, learn to be content. That's chapter 4 and verse 11. Number nine, through Christ, you can do all things. That's chapter 4 and verse 13. And the tenth thing, God shall supply all your needs. That's chapter 4 and verse 19. That's ten principles to make a strong Christian. If you read Philippians and do these ten things, get those things really ingrained in your mind, you will be a much stronger Christian. Okay, now the breakdown. Chapter 1, Paul has the Philippians in his heart. They get boldness seeing his sufferings for the Lord. And Paul wants to be with the Lord, but he is still needed by the saints. He's in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to, to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh was more needful for the Philippians. They needed him. Now, chapter 2, Paul tells them to put others first. Jesus is our greatest example of this. He put others first. He took seven steps downward when he was here. And the first one is he made himself of no reputation. Number two, he took upon himself the form of a servant. Number three, he was made in the likeness of men. Number four, he was found in fashion as a man. Number five, he humbled himself. Number six, became obedient unto death. Number seven, even the death of the cross. Seven steps downward. And Paul tells them to put others first just like Jesus is our greatest example of this, he took seven steps downward to put us first. Chapter 3, forget the things which are behind. One of the greatest things you can do is forget about the stuff that's happened in the past and reach forth into those things which are before. Press toward the mark for the prize. You can't do anything about what's already happened but you can press toward the mark for the prize. You can't change the past. You can do better in the future. Follow Paul and like-minded men all the way until he changes our vile body. That's what you see in chapter 3. Now, chapter 4, the things God wants us to accomplish are possible through Jesus Christ. Think on the things that are honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report. That's just a little summary there of each chapter. 
Philippians is a great book. And we got a little time left, so I'll go ahead and do Colossians as well. So Colossians, the outline for Colossians. Author is Paul, 62 to 64 AD, four chapters, 95 verses, around 1979 words. The theme is Jesus is our all in all. And all shows up 28 times in the book of Colossians. And Jesus is our all in all. Historically, Paul writes to the believers at Colossae to encourage them about their completeness in Christ. Doctrinally, Paul mentions Laodicea five times and commands that the epistle be read to the Laodiceans. So this letter can silence the false doctrine of the last days because we are in the Laodicean church age, the church that has fallen away from the truth, that's not living right, doing what they want to do. And devotionally, we are complete in Christ. And he can make us a Philadelphian Christian who isn't taken over by man's philosophy. Because Paul talks against a man's philosophy in the book of Colossians. You see, we may be living in the Laodicean church time period, but we can be a Philadelphian church Christian. Now, the breakdown. Chapter 1 is defining who Jesus Christ is. It has plain verses about the deity of Christ. Chapter 2, you got the. it shows the problem with the Laodicean church, their wicked philosophy, their vain, de, vain deceit, and them having the rudiments of the world. Chapter 3 through 4, how to overcome Laodicean philosophy. How do you do it? Chapter 3, seek those things which are above. Mortify your members. Put on the new man. Let the word of Christ dwell in you. Worship in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Wives, husbands, children, and servants should know their role. Know your role. Don't uh, uh, Wives, don't try to do the husband's role. Husbands, don't try to do the wives' role. Children, don't try to be above the husbands and wives. Servants, don't go against your master. Master, don't go against your, your heavenly master. If you do these things, this is how you can overcome the Laodicean philosophy that you see today. Chapter 4, remember your master in heaven. See, even the masters down here got a master in heaven. And pray for a door to preach the Lord and redeem the time because the days are evil. If we're living in the Laodicean church period, time's winding up. That last grain of sand is about to fall and you need to redeem the time because the days are evil.